Okay, so for the first step of this process, I want us to go and do some thumbnail sketches. And if you're one of my students, we did this several weeks ago for our pick five elements of art design. So what I want you to do is go on to the internet. If you're at home, try to research some ideas. We don't want to copy ideas, but what we want to do is create a landscape that is not realistic, that has more of simplified abstract shapes and lots of bright colors. And I've chosen to work from this picture that I took on the way home one day. I stopped on the side of the road and there were these guys looking at me. And so what I'm gonna do, I like the trees and the horizon line and the rocks and the weeds. And so I'm gonna use this landscape. However, remember that I said for this project, you may not include any uh, animals or people. You can include buildings or houses or other types of structures, but let's leave out the animals and people for this project. So my picture is in a landscape orientation. So with thumbnail sketches, they're just small little doodles of ideas that we can do. So I want to start brainstorming some simple shapes that I can use to replace the more detailed images. Now, I'm more of a realistic painter, and so it's quite a stretch and a challenge for me to simplify shapes in my mind. Uh, it's probably gonna be easier for you to do, but you're just looking for simple shapes that you can use. So I know that my horizon line is gonna be right about here. So I'll go ahead and put that right in there. Now remember the horizon line is where the sky meets the ground. And so I've got this line of trees that's just gonna appear more like bushes. So maybe I'll just start making these little shapes like this. Okay, I can have the, the bottoms kind of fade out into something else. So I'm just gonna do this squiggly wavy line and so remember we're going to show something in the foreground and the middle ground and the background so this line of bushes and my sky is going to be the the background so i'm going to have some more medium-sized trees and some weeds and things like that here in the middle Let's see so my weedy shapes are just going to be kind of like this maybe like a giant grassy shape maybe something like that And then maybe I could have a few, let's see, I've got this little mound of dirt right here. If you look in this picture that I'm working from, there's a little mound of red dirt and there's some rocks on it. So maybe I can just do these little jagged oval shapes to show some rocks. Now remember, you're simplifying shapes. You do not have to work from a realistic photograph. If you want to just look at some of the artworks like we looked at on Pinterest and get some ideas for how you can make your tree shapes and how you can make your cloud shapes. Uh, remember, don't copy, but you can get some inspiration for some different shapes that you can use. So I've got this little mound of dirt and I've got another little mound of dirt coming over here. So these are gonna be some things in my foreground. And then I've got this tree shape. Now I love drawing mesquite trees. They twist and turn, and so maybe I can just have a really abstract 
tree shape right here that twists and turns and goes off the page. And I don't have to get super detailed with, you know, what's going to happen. I know I, I want this to be a dark shape, so I can just kind of sketch that in as being dark. Maybe another branch comes up here from the bottom and goes back up here. It's just kind of wandering around. Now it's making a negative shape here. That's interesting. Looks like it could be a heart if I bring this branch down here a little bit more. That's kind of cool. So use your imagination. Imagine you go out hiking. You just take off walking through the fields, through the mountains, through the pastures, and what you might find there. Create your own little world, as Bob Ross says. All right, so right here I have this little clump of weeds. So I'm gonna be overlapping. Remember that overlapping is one is one way that we show space and distance. That's what this whole lesson is about. So we wanna make sure that we're overlapping things and things that are farther away, we wanna put them higher up on the page. So maybe I've got a little bit of horizontal lines here that are showing a more a flatter area. And then maybe I can have some smaller clumps of grass farther away because, you know, the farther away the object gets, the higher you'll put it on the page and the smaller it'll get. So again, creative ways to show space and distance on your little whimsical landscape here. Now, I was talking about earlier in our PowerPoint lesson uh, to me, whimsical just means fun and not realistic, uh, leaning more on your imagination and less on trying to recreate lifelike forms on your paper. So I've got a nice little sketch here and I've got some little shapes in my foreground. I've got this tree that's interesting and so what I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll draw for a little bit and I'll get four more ideas. I want you to at least come up with four more ideas for your thumbnail sketches. just kind of playing. I may know right away that this one won't be the one, but I can just keep making some thumbnail sketches. Also play with some values you know you can give certain things emphasis which is one of our principles of design and remember if your ideas are running dry go back to the internet go to Pinterest or Google and just go ahead and search like, I feel like I need some more shapes that I can use, and right now my mind is tired, and I'm like, what other shapes could I use? So, I'm going to just Google whimsical, colorful landscape. And so, I know you can't quite see what's on my screen here, but I've got a little rolling hill, and I've got some, like little crop rows, maybe there's some cotton growing out there, and then we can have little
making objects get smaller as they go back in the distance toward the horizon. Maybe we can have another sun like this. That's kind of interesting. Sunrise over the cotton field. And then as they go way in the distance, they just appear as little bitty dots. So I have a background of middle ground, a foreground, not quite sure what I'll put here, but maybe I can use one of these trees or a cactus, or maybe I could have a fence. Poster crooked, little cylinders with a little barbed wire. I can exaggerate the size. So that's part one, is just to get your thumbnail sketches down, to research ideas, to find a photograph that you might want to work from, um, but just remember our project guidelines and have fun with this. Just be as creative and loose as you can. Again, for me, I'm more of a realistic painter, so this is making me stretch and grow so that I can loosen up my art skills and not be so tight.